to 7 National News making headlines. Crown Prince of Abu Dhabi receives France's Defence Minister. AIM focuses on greater foreign direct investment into the UAE. And Japanese PM pledges more renewable energy. His Highness General Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan, Crown Prince of Abu Dhabi and Deputy Supreme Commander of the UAE Armed Forces, received at Almina Palace France's Defence Minister Gerard Longway, who is currently visiting the UAE. Sheikh Mohammed welcomed the minister and reaffirmed the importance of top officials' calls and continuous bilateral meetings in, in developing, reinforcing and fostering mutual cooperation ties with France on all levels and supporting the aspirations of both countries and people. He also discussed with the French Defence Minister ways of fostering closer bilateral relations between the two countries and expanding cooperation areas. The first ever Filipino tabloid launched in Dubai, Kabayan Weekly, according to company officials, will provide the much-needed platform to further bridge the gap between the Filipino community and the rest of the UAE. They added that this will also be instrumental in highlighting issues related to the communities. Khadija Sali has this report. The much-awaited launch of Kabayan Weekly last night met with a warm welcome from the different communities in the UAE. His Highness Sheikh Rashid bin Mohammed bin Ali al Nuwaymi of Ajman was among the guests of honor who graced the event as a show of support. Atala Habib, the publisher of the first-ever tabloid for the Filipinos in the Emirates, says it is indeed a proud moment. I saw that there is a lot of um, newspapers from the Indian newspaper, Arabic newspaper, English, Russian and what have you and none that are Filipinos. Filipino boxing champion Manny Pacquiao's recent win was among the headlines of its maiden issue. According to the paper, they hope to reflect what is current and important to the community as well as provide a news platform in a vernacular comfortable for its market. On the first day, 25,000 copies have already been distributed in commercial outlets across the UAE. First of all, I can say it was late. <laughs> Why? community now, as we know, that became like 30 to 40 percent of the population of UAE. Those popu big population of the community of Philippines, they need to know what's going on in their community in UAE. For sure, their newspaper, their TV will not show what's happening here. At the same time, it will have interaction between each other. They will listen to each other. They will raise their voice to to other people in the community. It just goes to show you how important the Filipino community has become and uh, how the Filipino community is really a force to reckon with. The other thing um, you know, that I feel about um, in, in the launching of this new publication is that the more players there are in the market, the better products we get out there for the Filipino reader. So I think it's a very good thing. At present, there are more than 400,000 Filipinos in the United Arab Emirates and make up a significant part of the population. I believe it's very much needed as long as it's done right and it's done for the benefit of the people. The information disseminated is the right information. Uh, I think that this newspaper can go a long way. We are there to support it. Having uh, been born and brought up in the Philippines and a lot of our businesses cater to the Filipino community, we are there to support it and ensure that it takes forward. Kabayan Weekly is a welcome development because it gives a platform for the Filipino community organizations to, to communicate their messages, especially their activities, their events. And most of the, these events are really charitable and are for the enhancement of the skills of uh, of the Filipinos here in the UAE. So it's a really a good platform that uh, the readers, especially those who are not uh, members of organizations, that they will know that there's this organization offering this kind of training. There is an event that is free and for them to enjoy. With the launch of the weekly paper, they hope to bring a piece of home to the Emirates for the Filipinos, as well as raise awareness and education on a variety of topics and issues through stories that matter to its people. Khadija Sali, 7 National News. 
Recent regulatory reforms and law amendments are set to further consolidate the UAE's position as a globally recognised high growth market. Economic and trade ministers, international investors and business delegations gathered at the annual investment meeting in Dubai to discuss innovative ways to increase the UAE's foreign direct investment, as well as enhance international trade cooperation between other countries. The need to give attention to sustainable development issues was the focus of the meeting and exhibition. We are proud in UAE that we attracted uh, FDI in the previous years, uh, with exception of the downturn and uh, during the financial uh, crisis. Uh, but uh, before that, and now when we are in the stage of recovering uh, our economy, we see more FDI coming to the region, to especially to the UAE, because of the infrastructure and the investment environment. The United Nations Committee on Trade and Development, which was the institutional partner of the UAE's annual investment meeting, discussed how international trade cooperation can be more effective by monitoring the planning, feasibility and investment directions taken by high-growth countries like the UAE. To monitor uh, investment flows um, in order to produce policy recommendations for developing countries um, on how to uh, attract investment and make, make investments uh, work for the people. There's a lot of opportunities here and uh, we, we wanted to <clears throat> make this event on investing in foreign direct investments in, in, in the green economy because we see this as, as a great opportunity. Emirates Airlines is planning to operate 100 flights a week to Australia, according to officials. The airline currently operates around 85 flights per week, but after seeing a 52% rise in profits for the year, the airline is looking for further expansion. According to a local paper, Emirates chairman Sheikh Ahmed bin Saeed Al Maktoum stated that when both sides meet, he will try to boost the number to 100, which would be a good business proposition for both parties. Emirates operated just four flights a week to Australia when it launched the route in 1996. The National Election Committee has issued the executive booklet for Federal National Council elections 2011 in a bid to enhance general awareness among the, among the public on the elections as well as the laws and regulations governing the electoral process. The executive booklet contains the Supreme Council resolution and outlines the method of selecting FNC representatives. In addition, it reveals the role of the NEC and its subcommittees and general rules. A man who jumped to his death from the 147th floor of the Burj Khalifa has been identified as a 32-year-old construction foreman from the Indian state of Tamil Nadu. Local reports have revealed that at about 9 a.m. on Tuesday, police received a report that a man had fallen from the tower. A criminal investigation department team was sent to the area immediately and investigations revealed that the man took the drastic move after his request for leave was reportedly denied from his company. The man who had landed on the 108th floor hit the metal barriers of the tower. Around two-thirds of the world's economic growth will come from emerging countries by 2015, which will account for 41% of global GDP. According to a local report released by the Economist Intelligence Unit, this is reflected in trade patterns as the emerging market share of GCC trade reached 45% in 2009, up from 15% in 1980. As for Dubai, non-oil trade reached 55 billion dirhams in January, a rise of 28% from the same period the year before, which was boosted by emerging superpowers India and China. According to Dubai's foreign trade statistics, Gold, pearls, precious stones and metals are the largest foreign trade category. As for China partnerships, analysts say the UAE will want to lock in the superpower as an expert market for oil and there has been a huge amount of investments into refineries. Africa and South America are also hugely important for food trade and farming and Asia for infrastructure and investment opportunities. Looking abroad now, Japanese Prime Minister Naito Kan said on Tuesday nuclear power would continue to play a significant role in Japan's energy policy, though renewable energy would be a key pillar of the policy. 
The government is reviewing its long-term energy policy and the role of nuclear power after the massive earthquake and tsunami on March 11th, knocked out cooling systems at a nuclear plant in Fukushima, triggering an ongoing battle to contain radiation leaks. During a news conference in the country's capital, Khan acknowledged the government held some responsibility in the nuclear crisis. He also said nuclear and fossil fuel power have been key components of Japan's energy policy, but the country must now put more emphasis on solar and other renewable sources where Japan lags globally. The level of the largest river in North America may have reached its peak at 47.87 feet on Tuesday morning in Memphis, Tennessee, and since then has dropped slightly, according to the National Weather Service. The U.S. government opened a spillway on Monday for the first time since 2008 to relieve the flooding pressure on the low-lying city of New Orleans. The government also prepared to open a second Louisiana spillway to ease the flows at New Orleans and Baton Rouge. South of Memphis communities without levees north and south of Vicksburg, Mississippi, already were inundated and other residents near the swollen banks of the river eyed their flood protections uneasily. Up next, we have the day's business news, so stay with us.